G'day, my name's Phil Smith. I'm the pioneer pastor of a small missional community on Australia's Sunshine Coast. Bells is about belonging, eating, listening, learning and serving. We're based in Bell Vista and Bells Reach in a new real estate development. Like many who are involved in what the, uh, the Church of England first branded as fresh expressions, there's a big question for us about the future for small organic church in Australia and in other countries where the large corporatized structures of denominations and movements have become such a necessity and such an expectation. So I'm having a yarn with Warren Crank. He's the bloke behind Red Dirt Church, a movement that originally began in outback and rural Australia, trying to meet the needs of small communities where large church is just no longer a possibility. So we're hooked up on Zoom between Townsville and Caloundra. Mate, give us the, uh, the thumbnail of you and like the, uh, the Kellogg cereal box competition version of what Red Dirt Church is. Okay, well, I'm, um, I've been a pastor for about 25 years in the Baptist movement. And um, essentially, when I was in Townsville first, we're sort of back here now. But when I was in Townsville the first time, I saw all the little towns west of here, um, which couldn't really afford um, a pastor or a, a facility. And I began asking myself the question then, you know, how can we establish simple faith communities in some of these locations? So, um, and Red Dirt Church is simple church for a sunburnt country. We do focus on rural and remote contexts, but uh, our, our role really is to mobilise simple churches, um, God willing, over time across the nation. Okay, well, the big question that a lot of people are asking is, is denominational church is corporate church still capable of establishing and then nurturing simple, organic, local churches? I think the question is, are they willing to, not whether they can. Um, basically, the, the simple church methodology isn't rocket science. It's been around for a long time since the birth of the church itself. And so it shouldn't be as uh, unfamiliar as sometimes it seems to denominational leaders. Um, so my, my answer to that question is yes. And in fact, doing a little bit of research as I have recently on denominationalism in the US, there seems to be a, a rising tide towards um, denominations networking uh, with simple church net networks, for example, to do some co-learning and some sort of leading together. But I actually think that denominations could host simple church, church networks uh, if they could just adopt adjust their own um, ecclesiology a little bit and perhaps let go of some of the controls that you you do have very often in a denominational system. Okay, well, I mean, there's an interesting thing. You used the term network already and we talk about denominational system. Um, what is the, the requirement, if you like, for simple local churches to be connected to one another and perhaps to something greater? Well, I think what we're finding, there were only, we've only just started and we're only 11 churches so far. So uh, it's not like we have a long way down the track, but probably our learning so far is that people want a little bit of backup support, particularly if they're sustaining something where they're working a full-time job, earning their money some other way, and they're leading a simple church voluntarily. They want some backup so that they know they can pick up the phone and get a bit of advice if they need it. Um, they also want the resources sometimes of, of other gifts and skill sets which may be not uh, in the local church that they're in. So, for example, for sustainability purposes, Red Dirt Church has established a little counselling service, professional people, people who are well-trained, who can actually be available in, for people in crisis so that, and, and accessible remotely, even like we're doing now, so that the simple church leader doesn't feel like they have to handle um, extreme situations, which sometimes pastors would, would need to handle. So it's that sort of scaffolding that I think people are looking for. In the case of Red Dirt Church, they're connected to some other people who are like-minded and doing similar things. That's always reassuring. And we also are able to offer them um, child safe training, as well as uh, a little bit of insurance coverage. So th those are a number of things that a denomination could also offer that I think simple church leaders are looking for 
to give them the confidence to scaffold the simple church sustainably. It's interesting that term simple church leaders. Uh, I'm not sure where the adjective sits. Those of us who are church leaders who are simple or those of us who are leaders who lead simple church. And probably both those things is, are, are quite significant. Um, what is it that, that we pro can provide and need to provide for the leaders of simple churches in order that they have the skills and, and some of the theological and teaching sort of skills that they might need to lead a local church? Well, for me so far, the people that have identified with the Red Dirt Church movement are people that already have either some training formally or they've been long time in a local church. Now, if you think of the theological um, investment made by hearing a thousand sermons and being part of a, a, the life of a traditional church, a lot of people are more trained than they think if they've simply been in the orbit of, of Jesus Church for a long time. But the, uh, the challenge for Red Dirt Church really is to train people on the run, uh, which is what we're trying to partner up with other organisations to do. Mm. I'm Phil Smith, and uh, my guest this afternoon is Warren Crank from Red Dirt Church. Uh, Warren's speaking to us from Townsville, and he's been one of the pioneers working in this area of trying to establish and plant simple organic churches throughout our regional and rural Australia. Well, look, Red Dirt, by its name, began for small rural communities throughout Australia. But surely the principles are equally applicable in a suburban environment, in a, a new real estate development, yeah. in those kind of contexts. Yeah, truth be told, there are a number of um, Red Dirt churches in suburban contexts anyway. So the name certainly does lean towards rural and remote, but it was intended to capture a kind of Aussie outdoorsy sort of movement as well. And so a lot of the Red Dirt Church people who are part of it at the moment are, are reaching people that perhaps aren't as comfortable sitting in rows or are being part of a, a traditional church as we might understand it. So the reality is that yes the principles are working whether they're in a rural remote setting or in a high density setting in some cases and for red dirt church we've articulated four things that are sort of the values that hold us together uh, the first one is that we're always personal and uh, one of the things that um, i have valued about leading a large church because i have in the past is all the sort of resources that you do have um, that you can move towards the mission but one of the things you lose as a church grows to any size, you know, above 40 or 50 is the ability to really um, be involved in the lives of the people who are part of it. So our churches are always intentionally small. They're personal. The second one is biblical. We meditate on the Bible. We encourage people to do that daily and learn to imitate Jesus. Transformational. The idea is that we're making a change for good in the communities that we're in, even as God changes us from the inside out. And the final one is missional, that we're kind of postured as unofficial chaplains in our uh, communities. So always looking to the outsider and always looking to who are the unchurched people in our networks that we can reach out to. So those are the four values that sort of undergird Red Dirt Church and they work in whatever setting. Warren, I want to ask you a question that, that may not be entirely fair, but why do we dream of of this idea of simple organic church? What is it that seems to be firing the hearts of so many people? Or is it just idealistic romanticism? We're looking back on what we think we understand the first century church to look like and hoping to plug that back in. No, I think the opposite. I think we're on the, only at the beginning of the simple church wave, really. And the reason I think that is because um, it's not the 1950s anymore. And uh, this is the way I often say it to people, is in the 1950s, nothing happened on Sunday. The pastor was probably the most educated person in the community, or one of them at least. And so people uh, were willing to come along on the weekend and learn from an expert uh, in the field because uh, that's, you had to be there in the room to listen to them. And, um, and that was sort of the culture that we were a part of. What's happening now is that most people are getting their learning on the run through podcasts that includes theological learning and theological training as well. And what they're valuing is peer-to-peer -peer learning and something that's very local and very grounded in the community that it's in. Most churches, particularly larger churches are regional. You drive in, you drive out, 
and you have very little to do with the culture of that local community or the people who are part of it. And I believe that what the itch that Simple Church is scratching is that people want to learn together now. Um, we're much better educated than we've ever been. So people can access great teaching from all around the world. So we're getting our, our learning as we go. But we really want to be a part of a community where life touches life and we're definitely grounded in a particular location and everything is very sort of organic and, and earthy from that point of view. So yes, it does riff off um, the early church for sure. But I actually think that, um, that it actually meets the need of where our culture is going. I mean, we all know there's a tsunami of loneliness in our culture. I've podcast on this recently, I've written about it. Lots of people are at the moment. And really, Simple Church uh, is, is very, very connected when it comes to the relationships that people have, and a lot of people are really looking for that. Warren Crank with us this afternoon as we talk about the idea, the, the possibility of moving toward simple, organic, local church at a time when throughout the church in Australia, we recognise the need is to plant, the need is to go back there as pioneers. Mate, I want to ask you, what would be some of the, the top three or four challenges that you imagine at a time of quite necessary regulation? We talk about compliance. You mentioned child safety training before, ethical oversight for the people who are leading maybe some of those questions of insurance and so forth. What are those things and how can they sit within this? Well, I guess we started with a blank page. This is the, the people who began dreaming the, the red dirt dream. And I know a lot of other people have led the way before us, but really the question we asked ourselves is, what do you need to be a church? And in this day and age, what do you need to be above board and to be healthy and helpful as a church as well? And what we realized is that for us anyway, um, this is, you know, with or without the Royal Commission, we would have been uh, absolutely laser focused on child safe. I have been for a long time. I started my ministry in a large church where there was, um, where someone went to prison from the staff team because of um, unethical behavior. And so I, I've been, had it wired into me for a long time, this child safe stuff. So that's a big part of it. Um, and at least at the, early stages of Red Dirt Church, I do offer ethical oversight and I am able to keep in touch with a lot of people from that point of view just at the moment. But the other one is insurance. So we, we registered Red Dirt Church as a company limited by guarantee um, in order to be recognised by the government and accountable. We didn't want to be um, sort of a, a shifty organisation. We wanted to be clear about who we were and also uh, completely above board uh, from a government perspective. So, so we, we decided, this is two, three years ago, that we wanted to be registered and accountable. We want to have the child safe situation absolutely covered across all that we're doing, that we do have personal oversight and a little bit of a leadership role in every Red Dirt Church leader so far. And also we are able to ensure people and make sure that they understand the culture around what makes a safe place. So those are the things that we've invested in, believing that that's the minimal necessary kind of governance that's needed in order to be um, uh, without blame as far as the organisation of Red Dirt Church is concerned. Warren Crank, I really appreciate spending time with you. And this is a topic we're going to dig into, obviously, a whole lot more. But I wonder if you could just finish our time together with with one story that, that you would like to celebrate that comes out of a, a red dirt mob somewhere? What's been a joy for you, one that puts a smile on your dial in the last six or 12 months? Okay. Well, probably one of our early stories um, created culture for us, and that is that um, really we're trying to reach people in our natural networks. So we're not door knocking or letterbox dropping or anything like that. It's actually a ripple effect movement that, that God's calling us to. So. Um, one of the first families to plant, and this was in suburban northern Brisbane, um, they had a friend of theirs that used to come to their place and they used to have meals together sometimes or, uh, and their kids used to play together. But um, her salvation story is that these same people invited her to come along to the little red dirt church that they were starting up and she was quite intrigued about it. And in her story, which is actually somewhere 
at the beginning of the Red Dirt Church Community Facebook page. You'd see it there. Her story was that actually we were doing the same things that we normally did. We were eating together, our kids were playing together, but this time with intent is what she said. And she began to discover about this, in her words, almighty God. And, um, and she became uh, a believer, a follower of Jesus, um, only in a matter of a few months, uh, actually, in that particular story. But why it was formative for Red Dirt Church is because it was a person in the nat natural network they were doing hospitality anyway, and just adding this level of intent where the Bible was getting open and we were talking deliberately about God was enough for this person to actually start on a very significant spiritual journey. She's still walking with the Lord, going strong, and uh, it's probably one of the very important stories. It does warm my heart when I think about it again. All right. May look every blessing and thank you for making time for us. Um, you are not alone on the journey. I imagine there are times when you really feel a bit like, whew, we're out there. But uh, all the best for uh, the years that are ahead and travel safe because I know you put a lot of miles in around this country. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate it, mate.